We share our world with creatures of all sizes, some are big, some are small. Mosquitoes definitely fall into the category we'd rather not cuddle with. They're not just annoying with their itchy bites, but they can also carry some nasty diseases. One you might not have heard of is Eastern Equine Encephalitis, or EEE for short. Don't let the long name fool you, this virus is a serious matter. EEE is what scientists call a zoonotic disease, meaning it can spread from animals to humans. It's primarily a bird disease, but mosquitoes can pick it up and pass it along to us. And when they do, it can cause serious problems, including inflammation of the brain, which can be life-threatening. The good news is, EEE is rare. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be aware of it and take steps to protect ourselves. So what exactly is Eastern Equine Encephalitis? It's a virus, and a pretty nasty one at that. It belongs to the alpha virus genus, known for causing encephalitis or inflammation of the brain. The virus is carried by mosquitoes, specifically certain types that like to feed on birds. These birds act as reservoir hosts, meaning they can carry the virus without getting sick themselves. Only certain species of mosquitoes, known as bridge vectors, can transmit the virus to humans and other mammals like horses. Once a bridge vector mosquito bites an infected bird, it can then transmit the virus to humans or horses through its bite. EEE can cause a range of symptoms, from mild flu-like illness to severe encephalitis which can be fatal. It's important to remember that while EEE is rare, it's a serious disease that shouldn't be taken lightly. Understanding the transmission process is key to prevention. When an infected mosquito bites you, it injects the virus into your bloodstream. The virus then travels throughout your body, eventually reaching your brain and spinal cord. Once inside your central nervous system, the virus begins to replicate, causing inflammation and damage to brain cells. This inflammation leads to the symptoms of encephalitis. The incubation period for EEE is typically 4 to 10 days. During this period you may not even know you're infected as you won't have any symptoms. Most people who are infected with the virus will never even know it, as they'll only experience mild or no symptoms. However, for those who do develop severe encephalitis, the consequences can be devastating. EEE is a bit of a chameleon when it comes to symptoms. Some people experience nothing more than a mild flu-like illness, while others face a life-threatening battle with encephalitis. For those with mild cases, symptoms might include fever, chills, headache, muscle aches, and joint pain. It's easy to mistake these symptoms for the common cold or flu, which is why EEE can be difficult to diagnose in its early stages. However, in severe cases, EEE can quickly escalate into a medical emergency. Symptoms of encephalitis include high fever, stiff neck, disorientation, seizures, coma, and even death. If you experience any of these symptoms, especially after being bitten by mosquitoes, seek medical attention immediately. Prevention is key to staying safe from this potentially deadly disease. While EE might sound like something out of a horror movie, it's important to keep things in perspective. The good news is, EE is relatively rare in the United States. The CDC reports an average of just 7 human cases per year. That's a tiny number compared to other mosquito-borne illnesses like West Nile virus. However, even though the overall risk is low, it's not non-existent. EEE tends to be more common in certain regions of the country, particularly the Atlantic and Gulf Coast states. States like Massachusetts, Florida, and New York have historically reported higher numbers of cases. Factors like weather patterns, mosquito populations, and bird migration can all influence the spread of the virus. So, while you don't need to panic, it's crucial to be aware of the risks, especially if you live in or are traveling to areas where EEE is more prevalent. The town of Plymouth, Massachusetts found itself in the headlines recently due to an outbreak of EEE. It all started when a horse tested positive for the virus, raising concerns about potential human transmission. As a precautionary measure the town took swift action, closing public parks and fields from dusk to dawn, the peak mosquito biting hours. This incident serves as a stark reminder that EE is not just a distant threat, it can emerge anywhere conditions are favorable for mosquito breeding and virus transmission. The Plymouth case highlights the importance of proactive mosquito control measures and public awareness campaigns. Local authorities implemented aerial spraying, public education campaigns, and enhanced surveillance to monitor for new cases. By taking proactive steps to reduce mosquito breeding grounds around our homes and practicing personal protection measures, 
we can all contribute to mitigating the risk of EEE transmission. Now that we understand the seriousness of EEE, let's talk about what we can do to protect ourselves and our loved ones. The good news is, many of the preventive measures are simple and effective. It's all about being mosquito smart. First and foremost, eliminate mosquito breeding grounds around your home. Mosquitoes breed in standing water, so empty any containers, bird baths, or clogged gutters where water might collect. Even a small bottle cap can become a breeding ground for these pesky insects. Next, dress defensively, especially during peak mosquito biting hours, which are typically dawn and dusk. Wear long sleeved shirts and pants to minimize exposed skin. Light colored clothing can also help, as mosquitoes are attracted to dark colors. Don't forget to use insect repellent. Look for repellents containing DEET, picaridin, or oil of lemon eucalyptus. Apply repellent to exposed skin and clothing, following the instructions on the product label. EEE may be a rare disease but it's a serious one that shouldn't be taken lightly. By understanding how the virus is transmitted, recognizing the symptoms, and taking proactive steps to prevent mosquito bites, we can all do our part to minimize the risk of infection. Stay informed about EEE activity in your area by checking with your local health department or the CDC website. Be especially vigilant during peak mosquito season and in areas where the virus is more prevalent. Don't let the fear of EEE keep you from enjoying the great outdoors. By being mosquito smart and taking appropriate precautions, you can safely enjoy all that nature has to offer. Stay safe, stay informed, and remember, a little prevention goes a long way.